Expert course, part of our four-week focus series. We're going to jump right into how to become a better shooter, starting with working on power, how we can generate power to eventually generate a longer range shot and still maintain our position. We're going to go through a lot of different aspects of this over the next four weeks, uh, but this is the groundwork. This is where it all starts, so let's jump in. Three big things we're going to cover today. First is generating leg power. Uh, a lot of people talk about bending their knees. We're going to get a little bit deeper than that into body mechanics that really help generate power and kind of the science behind it a little bit. Uh, shoulder and hip leverage, thinking about our upper body as a way to leverage that lower body power, make sure it translates into our upper body, shoulders, hands, eventually into the ball. And then thirdly, and probably most importantly, we're going to talk about catch and shoot footwork, what we call our stride stop catch. Making sure our footwork is consistent every time is one of the number one things that affects how well we're able to make shots. So let's get into these a little bit deeper. Leg power. We like to use what's called activated form shooting, uh, really based on the science of neuromuscular activation. So really two systems of the body that are being synchronized. The nervous system, the neurons of your brain and spinal cord firing the electrical sign signals to your muscles and getting those muscles activated in sequence that synchronizes all your power, really thinking about creating a more efficient movement for your body overall. So you may have a pretty good jump shot. There may be a couple of pieces, a couple of muscle groups that are involved in your jump shot that aren't quite in sync and they're throwing you off. You know, may make you be a streaky shooter, might cause some issues in a lot of different ways. So we're going to work on really specific way to generate focused energy into a synchronized motion that's going to really make your body move more efficiently and really create a opportunity for more power to reach the ball. Whatever our body's doing, we want to make sure that lightning bolt of energy is getting to the ball and sending it as far and as accurately as we can. And uh, we also do this by really challenging your body to generate power without jumping. So kind of thinking about this as training wheels, what we call activated form shooting. It's kind of a, a stationary position. We're moving parts of our body without jumping. Jumping is like a shortcut to power. And so we're kind of taking out that shortcut, training your body through a more difficult process without using a jump and kind of refining the movement again, training the body, training that neuromuscular activation system so that when you go back to adding a jump, you suddenly have dramatically more power by having made your body move more efficiently. So we're going to watch a quick demo of what this looks like when we're talking about activated form shooting, and this will be exactly what it looks like when we're working with you on the court. form shooting, part of our range amplifier system. So most coaches teach form shooting kind of stationary, close to the basket, really only using one arm. I call it shooting from the elbow up. And I found over time it just doesn't translate well to shooting from deep range. So what we've evolved to is what we call activated form shooting by using our back leg and activating all of our lower body muscles up and through our shot. We're able to coordinate and connect both the arm motion position, precision and the leg motion that generates power so we can shoot from deep range with a lot of precision. So uh, we've got eight different focus points that we use to really develop this. One is starting like I am now with my right leg back, what we call it a lunge position. Two is starting with the ball at our chin. And then as we progress forward, we're focusing on shoulders over our toes, hips forward, finishing on our toes, and then eventually elbow to eyebrow and two finger fall through. So we like to talk about building this as a pyramid. We're going to start with our legs, focusing on the lunge position, and stepping to even toes as we push through. And as we progress with the player through the workout, and eventually over several weeks' time, we start to assemble all those pieces together until uh, they can shoot from deep range with a very high accuracy. So again, good uh, just preview of what you're going to be doing on the court. It'll make uh, a lot more sense when you're doing it in action yourself, and we'll be able to coach you through it. 
Uh, let's talk about shoulder and hip leverage. Um, you just saw there in the video, one of the things we talk about is trying to get our shoulders over our toes, trying to get all that power forward into our toes so that when we drive up, we've basically compressed the spring of our legs and our toes and our feet, and then we're exploding that spring upward as we go up into our shot motion. And one of the best uh, analogies for this movement that I've found in the exercise world is what's called a kettlebell, kettlebell swing, uh, where it's not like a squat where you're trying to actually get your back upright and your butt down and back. We're actually leaning forward and getting our weight into our toes. And then the real emphasis of the movement is focusing on your hip drive. Driving the hips forward is what generates the most power. You know, using the biggest muscles of your body uh, in your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your glutes, and driving those hips forward. So one, two of the biggest focus points we're going to have during our activated form shooting sequence is first getting shoulders over toes and then driving the hips forward as we go up. And those two motions are what we call creating and then using leverage, right? Think about the, the bar of your body from your shoulders to your hips. The more you can lean that forward to start, the more space you have for your hips to drive forward from that position. So that's a great way to generate power. And again, doing that without jumping allows your body to really uh, optimize that movement. So I'm gonna show uh, a quick video, actually a YouTube trainer of uh, doing a kettlebell swing. So you can get an idea of what that looks like. Yo, BJ Gator with Men's Health. And today, lucky you, I'm gonna teach you how to swing your way into the best shape of your life. Here's how to do the kettlebell swing the right way. In its fundamental performance, it is two shapes you move between. One, a standing plank, rib shoulders down, abs tight, head in line with the spine. Think about being on a front plank but in a standing position. Number two is a hip hinge position where I've got soft knees. They're not bent, but I'm also not squatting. It's a soft quarter bend the knees maintain throughout that movement. And I've got straight line head through heels, a slight natural arc in my lower back. I am a tabletop position. You should be able to eat dinner off the back side of that body. And all I'm doing is flowing between those two positions. So to set up, I have one external cue to worry about to put a foam roller behind you. If you hit the foam roller, it means you're squatting too much, and that's not what we want to do when we swing. It's a swing, not a squat. If you are clearing the foam roller, you're money, all right? So get set up. You want the handle of that kettlebell aligned with the eyes. Flat back, tabletop position. I want you to screw your hands into that handle to kind of corkscrew and lock tension in your rear shoulder and lats and create stability. These are big spinal stabilizers, your lats. Turn them on, get in a good position. From there, all I'm gonna do is hike the weight behind my body, come up and do a plank. Boom, exhale to the top. So if you look at where he is here, this is what we'd call shoulder over toe position. This is what we're looking at to do when we catch a pass. We're gonna be leaning into it low and aggressive. And then as we go through our shot motion, we want to be able to drive Yo, hips, forward. hips forward up into um, that standing plank position he was describing. So it's a fairly simple movement, but uh, where most people are, again, focused on bending your knees, they tend to get toward a squat position, which actually gets our weight back and will cause us to really jump and lean backwards when we shoot. We want to get that really aggressive forward lean angle so that when we push and when we eventually jump, all that power is up and forward into our ball and our shooting motion. So last piece here we're going to talk about is the catch and shoot footwork. Again, uh, this is kind of the, the most foundational part of this whole thing with shooting is to have our feet doing the right thing always, doing it consistently. So what we like to do is, again, called a stride stop. Uh, some people call it a one-two stop. Basically, we're using our non-dominant foot first every time so that we have no question about which foot is our pivot foot, which foot is free to attack. So uh, in a stride stop, if you're a right-handed player, this would mean your left foot is landing first and your right foot is then free if we were gonna go drive or do anything else from there. But if we catch it left, right, every time we catch, we start to develop a lot of consistency, uh, both with timing and with power, so that when we're shooting, we always have the same amount of power, the same rhythm to deal with in our hands and every other part of our shot kind of builds on top of that. Uh, so we like to work with this, timing it with a bounce pass, uh, what I call late and quick feet. So if you could think about if I'm throwing you a bounce pass, if you start to move early before the ball bounced, you would end up kind of hanging one foot in the air waiting for the ball to arrive before you could finish your second step and then get into your jump. So it's kind of 
ends up with a slow and then a fast rhythm. It kind of changes midstream of the shot. Uh, what we like to do is wait until after the ball bounces, so it's bouncing up to you already, and then you're going really quick left-right jump all in sequence right as the ball arrives. So we're trying to train that timing and rhythm mechanism by using a bounce pass, and then eventually we'll progress to using a chest pass, where it's a little bit faster, a little bit more difficult to time, but the, by doing a few repetitions first with a bounce pass, you're able to translate that and eventually speed it up very easily because you've got that rhythm timing mechanism kind of locked in your brain uh, with how the ball arrives and how your feet move and how your shot works. So we're going to see one more video here to demo that and then we'll wrap up. All right, we are taking a look at our stride stop shooting footwork, breaking down how we want to catch a pass every time to be ready to shoot be ready to attack right or left, making sure that we are balanced and ready to shoot, as well as leaning forward to generate power when we're shooting and leaning forward aggressively so that we can take advantage of any defense that is overplaying a shot and be able to drive by them. So we're going to see a clip here. I'm going to play it full speed and then go back and play it slow motion for you. Uh, we're going to see a drive to the right first, but looking at footwork, how we're catching with our left foot on the ground first, left, right. Right foot's actually reaching to attack in this scenario, looking at a right-hand drive for a right-hand dominant player. So, slow motion. We're looking at a little bit of a what I would call a gallop here into the catch. He's anticipating the play, you know, working on decision-making here as he sees the closeout come. But watching the footwork is our focus. Looking at left, right. And then as he reads the drive, that right foot is hovering over the floor and reaching to get by the defender. So where we would stop that right foot to shoot, he's swinging that right foot ahead of him to gain a step advantage as he reaches the dribble and gets all the way to the rim. Let's look at just plain catch and shoot next. Looking at left, right, shot. That is the epitome of what we would call a stride stop or a one-two footwork, uh, as it's more commonly called. We like the stride-stop terminology because it gives you a better picture of your stride coming into a run from any situation, landing on one foot and then the other, and uh, gives us a big advantage for balance as we catch to shoot it. So let's go back and see slow-mo again here. Uh, we're trying to get that timing of a bounce pass as we're training this. We're using the bounce as our signal. So we're patient, what we call late and quick. We're waiting for the bounce to hit the floor and then fire the feet quickly to meet the balls as bouncing up. So we get a left and then a right. Again, this is for a right-hand dominant shooter. And then he's up into the shot. Uh, really good example of balance here. High follow through. All the pieces we want to see with shooting. Uh, but again, our focus here is that footwork, trying to get that left, right, <clears throat> really quick timing as we meet the pass after a bounce. We're going to see one more here with a drive to the left. Again, coming from the same catch, we're trying to get consistent footwork on that and make sure that we're always ready to shoot when we catch. And to our defender, it looks identical. They don't know what's coming next. We are a shooter in their mind based on how we're catching this. So we've got a left, right. And now the closeout is up high, so he's reading it to drive. Uh, footwork was the same on the catch, and now this right foot is reaching to go with a dribble. Right, so it's left hand with right foot when attacking to the left, and he gets his three big strides to get all the way to the rim and finish. So we're going to spend a lot of time breaking this down on the court for you, but I wanted to give you a quick visual what it looks like to catch and shoot, catch and drive, both right and left making sure our footwork's always the same. And again, really keying in on that timing, getting that late and quick, uh, using a bounce pass as we get spun up with this and get comfortable with it. And then we eventually advance to a little quicker chest pass as we get more comfortable with that timing. All right, so that's it for week one of our sniper course. Uh, Look forward to getting you on the court and walking you through all this. And uh, hopefully by having this preview, you'll be uh, ready to jump into action. We like to uh, use this video to kind of shortcut our communication, make sure we're, we have uh, less talk and more action when we're on the court.
and make that time as effective as possible for you. So that's it for week one. I will see you on the court soon.